Welcome to Beth's Happy Home. I've been a little frustrated over the past few years because I've heard I've had so much pushback about the concept of canning pumpkin and I understand what the issues are and I'll share them with you but um, I think that it can be safely done and the fact that I've been doing it for 20 years is not proof that it's safe to do but um, I think I'm going to show you the four layers of protection that I use when I do can pumpkin and you can draw your own conclusions about whether that is um, enough proof that you can feel confident in canning pumpkin puree. It's easy to can. Um, if you can the pumpkin chunks, there's no question, there's no controversy. Uh, you're not going to get yelled at. But if you're of the camp that you never, ever, ever can safely can pumpkin, please watch through the end of this video because I think that um, some of your concerns will be allayed if you have looked into what is actually the basis for the, um, the policy that it isn't safe to can pumpkin. So the reason that it is not recommended is because pumpkin is a very low acid vegetable. It can carry botulism spores in it. Now. it's easy to denature the botulism toxin. It only has to be heated to 185 degrees Fahrenheit and the toxin is denatured. So even if there are botulism spores in there, the toxin itself, which is what makes you sick, um, is denatured so it's not going to hurt you. It goes away. It, it is broken up into its parts and it's no longer this, this toxin. So. The other number that you need to know is that botulism spores are killed at 250 degrees. And it happens that when you cook something in a pressure cooker on 15 pounds of pressure, that temperature inside the pressure cooker comes up to 250 degrees. So you can be confident that you are killing off the spores if you're cooking at a temperature that hot. And so that isn't just a matter of denaturing it, that's a matter of eliminating the botulism spores. Also, when you cook with salt or sugar, you're going to protect against botulism. Botulism does not thrive in a salty situation or in a, um, a sugary situation. That's why you don't even need to pressure cook fruits when you're canning with sugar. Um, so, all, taking all those things into consideration, I'm going to show you my four layers of protection and safety precautions that I take and I do can pumpkin and I use it all the time. So the first thing is to scrub your pumpkin really well, but that's not one of my precautions. That's just because I don't want dirt in my, in my pumpkin puree. And another um, thing that is good to know is that I've seen all kinds of videos where they say that you have to use these little sugar pumpkins. Well, I have had great luck just doing the jack lantern pumpkins or the ones that I grow in my backyard. The bigger the better. Um, and so, but I got curious and so I bought some sugar pumpkins and I bought several different varieties of pumpkins at the store. And um, the jack o' lantern pumpkin that I had was actually the sweetest one of all. So I don't think that there's any reason to get, get a little um, sugar pumpkin or a pie pumpkin. Get a big pumpkin and you get a lot more for your money. These are um, one of the least expensive foods that you can possibly buy. So um, this pumpkin is all clean and scrubbed. He's been very thoroughly bathed. And I'm going to just cut him into pieces because I want to fit him into my pressure cooker. I've already got a couple inches of water in there um, just so I don't forget to put it in. And this guy feels like he is going to be a very sturdy, thick-walled pumpkin. Now another thing, if you used a pumpkin as a jack-o'-lantern, that does not mean that you can't cook him and turn him into pie or turn him into pumpkin puree for use in pumpkin bread, pumpkin muffins, pumpkin soup, all things yummy and pumpkin. Uh, just pick off the black parts. <laughs> But I think you probably would have figured that out all by yourself. Ah. Oh, he is a beauty. 
Look at how thick the walls of the flesh are right here. So that is, that's a good buy. But I had a feeling that he was going to be a good one because um, he was so heavy. When I went to pick him up and put him in my grocery cart, um, he, he was just really, really heavy. Now, I, um, for a couple of years, I had a lot of success growing pumpkins in my yard. But the last two years, I haven't had much success at all. Last year, I only got one pumpkin. This year, I did not get any pumpkins. But I got a lot of, of butternut squash. Um, and, for, and I planted pumpkins, but the squash bugs got them. And battle them as I would with the dish soap and all the remedies that um, you use for that. None of them helped. Anyway, I'm just going to clean out this pumpkin. this pumpkin pretty much filled my pressure cooker. So now I'm going to pressure cook this pumpkin loose in the pressure cooker on 15 pounds of pressure and then I'm going to cool off the outside of the pressure cooker really quickly, release the pressure and then I'm going to measure the temperature of the pumpkin itself. So this is the other half of the pumpkin. This blender is nice and clean, but at any point in this process where the food is exposed to air, you have the potential for introducing um, airborne um, botulism spores. Because that's where they come from. They're not in the food itself. They're in the air. And if you give them an environment where they can grow, then they will. But they only grow in an anaerobic situation, which means without air. So you can pressure cook them. And uh, you can still end up with the potential of botulism in there, even if they've been pressure cooked. So, as you see, I didn't squeeze any of the moisture out of it. I left the moisture that's in there intact. One piece up here, one piece of skin that doesn't want to, oh, there's more than one. There's another chunk right there. It didn't want to go down. Okay, as quickly as I can, I'm going to fill these jars with the hot pumpkin just up to the neck right here. I've got this all full. Now I'm going to add another layer of protection and safety and that is I'm adding a half a teaspoon of salt to each jar because botulism is also um, does not thrive with salt. And so actually I'm going to just drop that right in there. Add the salt and then we will put on these lids while it's still nice and hot, too hot to touch or handle really. But I want to work really fast so that it stays really hot. The pumpkin puree is steaming hot when it goes into the bottle. And it's loose enough that it will be able to boil in the jar. I have about enough 
to do another pint, I think I'm not as concerned about the pint because the pint is going to be a smaller quantity. It's going to be easier for that heat to get all the way to the middle. And if you're especially concerned, even using this process, quarter teaspoon of salt in there, um, I recommend that you use pint jars. there. Once it starts to blow steam really well, um, let it do that for five minutes or so and then um, put on your weight. Set your weight on the 15 pounds of pressure and set it right on there. And that will allow the pressure to build up. When it gets to 15 pounds it will start to rock and hiss and then you start your timer and you're going to cook it at 15 pounds of pressure for one hour. Okie dokie. I have a feeling that this is done. Yep, there's no more pressure left in there. So we're going to pop this open. And remove these jars to cool. Oops, pulling that upside down. Okay, I can see the pumpkin is actually boiling in there, which suggests to me that it is plenty loose enough that the heat got all the way to the middle if the pumpkin itself is boiling inside. But I'm going to just, while that water is still hot in the bottom of my canner, I'm going to dump this batch in and start cooking it. get going on that. Um, all right, the pumpkin is all done. It's all cooled off. All of the jars sealed, so I'm happy. That was a big success, um, even though I forgot to wipe the rims on the first few. I managed to get away with it this time. So I promised you four layers of precautions to make it um, a safe proposition and it's really the fourth one that is the clincher that would keep you absolutely guaranteed of being safe and then there but there is a fifth one that I failed to mention that I'm going to add in too so you get a little bonus so um, the first one was that you cook your, your pumpkin at a high temperature in a pressure cooker you make the puree and you put it into the jars while it's still hot and you do that as quickly as you can and that way um, you're going to keep the heat in the middle of the jar so that when you put it in the canner it's easier for it to get up to the full temperature in the middle of the jar because you gave it a head start. Um, and you also killed off a lot of the bacteria before you ever put it in the jar. Um, you're not probably going to be able to kill the botulism itself um, but you certainly have sterilized the food before it goes into the jar, so that's an added bonus. The um, second thing that you're going to do as a precaution is you're not going to squeeze any of the water out of the pumpkin before you make the puree. You're going to leave it in that soggy state, and that way it's going to produce a looser pumpkin puree, and the looser it is, or the more runny it is, it, that means that um, the heat can get into the middle of it more readily. And so that is a good idea to just leave it loose. And you might have to adjust your recipe a little bit if it calls for the solid pack, pack pumpkin. You might need to add a little flour to help it set up. But it will have a delicious taste, I promise. Um, 
Also, you added, as a precaution, you're going to add some salt. Now, the store-bought type pumpkin doesn't have any salt added, but by adding the salt, you're going to add a preservative. Botulism is, uh, can't form the toxins in a salty environment, so that's going to help protect you against the botulism as well. Make sure that you mark it on the lid so that you remember to adjust your recipe that's using your pumpkin, um, remembering that it already has salt in it, but put it on the lid so that you are sure to remember. And then the fourth thing, which as I said is really the clincher, is a precaution that you take when you use the pumpkin, and that is that you treat it as though you assume that it has botulism, botulism in it. Now, I hope that it doesn't, but if you assume that it does, that means you're not going to taste it um, until it has been cooked. It needs to be raised to approximately boiling. It doesn't need to quite boil, but um, for the sake of, of ease, um, bring it up to a boil and hold it there for five minutes. Now, if you're using it in pies, you're gonna bake it in the oven. Just don't taste the pie filling until after it's been turned into pie. And don't lick your hands. Don't uh, don't taste it at all until it has been cooked or baked. If you're using it in a soup, heat it all the way up. Keep it there um, at least to boiling. Even if your uh, the soup recipe calls for you to add it later, heat the pumpkin first and then add any kind of creamy liquid that you're going to add that you wouldn't want to have separate. So, by assuming that you have contamination, you will protect yourself against ever getting sick because you will not taste it until it's been cooked again. So, the other thing, the number five thing that will help as a protection against botulism is that you're going to store your pumpkin in a cool place. And if it's below 70 degrees, as a general rule, um, botulism is going to have a very, very difficult time uh, reproducing or producing its toxins. So all of those things together will make it so that you can safely can and use uh, pumpkin. Just make sure that you assume that none of it worked and that you have to heat it to boiling when, before you go to use it, before you go to eat it. So that's my renegade uh, proposition for you to undertake the preserving of this wonderful nutritious food that is so inexpensive this time of year in the fall and that most people have pumpkins on their porch and then they end up throwing them away and it's just a pity. So go ahead and can them. Just be careful. Use all the precautions that you can. Thanks for watching.